Today I'm going to show you a reliable way to test two, three, or four wire heated oxygen sensors without the use of a propane torch as shown in other YouTube videos. Older one wire oxygen sensors without heaters, like you see right over here, cannot be tested using the method I'm about to show you. Oxygen sensors, also known as lambda sensors, are used by the vehicle's computer to sense the amount of oxygen present in exhaust gases to determine if the engine is running too lean or too rich. Information from the oxygen sensors along with the MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor, are used by the computer to regulate fuel injector output to achieve the ideal fuel-air mixture, which is 14.7 grams of air per one gram of fuel. Many people that get trouble codes when using an OBD scanner that show oxygen sensor problems, such as heater circuit problems, slow sensors, or too lean or too rich codes, usually go out and buy a new expensive oxygen sensor when it's usually not the problem. Other faulty components, such as the MAF sensor, can cause oxygen sensor trouble codes to pop up, and poor wire harness connections can also cause trouble codes to show up. Now for this testing procedure, you're going to need a good digital multimeter, a set of jumper wires like you see right here, these are very inexpensive. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight or many places online. You're going to need a 12 volt source of power and that's going to be the vehicle's battery. You're going to need a small bucket with a lid as well as a candle. The test I'm about to show you for this oxygen sensor is very reliable, but it's not 100% like many other tests. Now when you take a close look at the oxygen sensor, you can see there's little tiny openings right over here. And what that does, it allows the exhaust gases to enter inside where you have a zirconium ceramic material with a small amount of platinum that is used to sense the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases. In order for the sensor to work properly, it acts like a little low voltage generator. It needs to be heated high enough in temperature and that's usually between 300 and 400 degrees Celsius or 600 and 750 degrees Fahrenheit. When that temperature has been reached, the sensor output wire is going to produce a very low voltage between 0 and 1 volts, but normally it's going to be around 0.1 to 0.9 volts. The computer is going to use that reading to adjust the fuel-air mixture of the vehicle. You're going to have a very low reading at the computer of 0.1 volts if the engine is running very lean, very high levels of oxygen, and you're going to see a reading that's going to be very high when the oxygen levels are very low or running very rich. Now to help this oxygen sensor get to the normal operating temperature fairly quickly, inside that sensor is a heating element. So when you turn on your key to start the vehicle up, that heating element is going to receive current, allowing that to heat up quickly along with the exhaust gases from the engine. Most oxygen sensors, unless they're very expensive, usually heat just below the operating temperature of the sensor element. It's going to require the engine's exhaust, which has an average temperature of around 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, around 8 or 900 if the vehicle's idling, and it could be as high as 1500 degrees Fahrenheit when the engine is wide open throttle. So it's going to use the heater inside along with the exhaust gases to get this up to operating temperature very quickly. When the engine's first started, it's going to take a little bit of time for this to heat up to the right temperature until it reaches that correct operating temperature, the computer is going to be running an open loop using preset or saved values for the oxygen sensor. Once the voltage starts coming into the computer, it's going to know the temperature of the sensor is now high enough and it's going to start using the voltage readings from the sensors to determine the level of oxygen in the exhaust gases. Now as mentioned earlier, there are some oxygen sensors out there that are a lot more money, usually made by Bosch, and what they have inside is a heater that has the ability to not only heat this to just below the normal operating temperature, but to heat it all the way up to the operating temperature of the sensor element well under a minute, maybe 20 or 30 seconds. The heater is not only used to get this to the normal operating temperature when it's cold, but it's also used to maintain the operating temperature when the vehicle is idling at a low RPM, when the exhaust gas temperature is much lower. In this video, we're going to be checking the most common problems 
One is the internal heater. Two is to see if it's reacting to oxygen or the lack of oxygen. And you're also going to be able to see if the reaction time is very fast because you do not want a sensor that's very slow to change when different levels of oxygen are being detected in the exhaust system. Now in order to check this, we do not have to heat it all the way up to the operating temperature. You can heat it just below using the internal heater of the oxygen sensor. The voltage is going to be far less, but you can still tell using the lower voltage readings if this is working properly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is identify the heater wires in your oxygen sensor. Now this one here, you can see the two white wires. And then I have a black wire, and then there is a gray wire. So if I look this one up online, you want to check yours online to get the pinout for your vehicle. This one right here, the two whites are the heater, and it's very easy to identify if you have a four pin. Just take a digital multimeter on a low resistance range, and you're going to probe between the pins, and then you're going to look for a reading between two of the pins. That's between five and 10 ohms. Once you identify the two pins, you're going to know that you have the heater. Some oxygen sensors may not have the ground wire here. The ground connection may be coming from the plug itself, so you may have to test between the connector and the oxygen sensor body. Once you identify the heater wires, the next thing you're going to do is take jumper wires. You can see the connector right there. So one on the bottom there. Good. This one here on the top. Okay, so those two are connected. You're going to take this right here and you're going to connect it to your car battery and you're going to let it sit for around five minutes. Keep in mind, this is going to get very hot, around 480 to 500 degrees. And you can see right here in this infrared image that the temperature of this part right over here is right around 470 after a few minutes of being heated. And if it's 470 on the outside, you know the internal part is going to be even hotter. Okay, mine is connected up to a power supply unit, which is going to output a voltage of 12.6 volts, which is going to be exactly what a fully charged car battery should be. The power is not on yet. The next thing you're going to want to do is take your digital multimeter. In a minute, we're going to be putting it on a millivolt DC range. You're going to identify the sensor output pin. In this case, it's the black one, which is right here. So I'm going to reach in, connect it to the black pin. Okay, so that one's on there. Now I'm going to take the negative from the meter and connect that to the sensor ground. So that's going to be the gray one on this one, right there. Now before connecting the positive and negative of the heater for the oxygen sensor to your car battery, you're going to put this to millivolts. All right, leave it like that. And now I'm going to turn on my power supply unit. Current for the heater usually starts off around two, two and a quarter amps. And as it heats up, the current begins to drop to a level of around one amp that's going to maintain the temperature of the sensor. So now you're just going to leave this alone allow the sensor to fully heat up for about three to five minutes. Then we're going to come back, take a look at the reading, and I'm going to give you a couple of demonstrations using the sensor. Okay, after three minutes, this should be very, very hot. Do not touch it. If you put your hand over it and it does not feel hot, that's going to indicate that the heater inside the sensor is faulty and you're going to want to replace it. And over here, the voltage reading has reached a stable output of around 1.26 millivolts. The reading you get is not critical, just as long as it reached a level that's very stable before carrying on the next test. So this is the reading in our atmosphere with the oxygen that's available in the air, around 21%. Now we're going to take a candle and place it inside of a container. We're going to put a lid on that container and allow the candle to burn up all the oxygen inside the container. And then I'm going to take this, place it inside by holding it from the top, and you're going to observe the reading right over there. Okay, you can see the candles inside. I'm going to place a plate on top. And now we're gonna to wait 
for the candle to use up all the oxygen inside this container. Keep an eye on the meter and watch what happens as soon as I place the oxygen sensor inside the chamber. Here we go. You see that? It went way up. Because there's a lack of oxygen inside, the voltage went higher. Just like the propane torch test, it displaces oxygen around the sensor element, causing the voltage to rise. Take it back out, and it should go right back down. You want to make sure that the response time was very quick like you saw in the meter. If the value does not change or it changes very slowly, you're going to want to replace that sensor. Now the last thing I want to do is just show you what this is going to do when I place it in a pure oxygen environment. Let's do that and then take a look at the meter. Okay, now just like the propane test, when the flame is removed from the tip of the oxygen sensor, the voltage goes low. In here is pure oxygen. Watch what the reading does on the meter. Here we go. Went low in a big way. Take it back out. And you can see it goes right back down. And it's as simple as that. The test does work. And it should help you rule out the oxygen sensor as the problem if you're getting a trouble code on your vehicle. One important thing to mention if you're a subscriber of my channel be sure to click that bell to the right of the subscriber button underneath the video player window so you're going to be notified every time I upload a video to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.